to Kate Sag. I am here with Darcy and today is going to be super exciting because I am going to learn how to rake the field or it's also called heavy harrowing. So we basically have a big rake attached to the back of our John Deere tractor and it spreads apart the chaff from the back of the combine, so all of the straw that was left behind in the field. So when we go back to seed this field in the spring or winter time, we will be able to go through it with the drill and won't have any problems getting stuck. Would that be correct, Darcy? Yeah. You know where you got uh, plugged up last fall in that one field? Yes. That, that was because it wasn't great. And a lot of times when combining, even though you have the straw choppers on the back of the combine that chop up part of the wheat that we don't take because the combine only keeps the kernel, but when you stop, it kind of creates big piles and that's something that is really hard on the drill to go through and you actually plug your drill up. So that's why we do this process on most of our fields. And this particular field, we actually did not have the straw choppers on and we had balers come in and bail. So you will see some twine caught up in the heavy harrow from this field as well and it is getting everything that the baler didn't get. Once you finish a field and lift the rake up, there will be big piles left that we eventually have to burn when there's a lot more moisture in the area so that we don't cause a massive fire. I actually rode in a tractor that was heavy harrowing last year with our neighbors so this is a very cool experience. Darcy's going to teach me how to drive so I'm super excited. What would you say is the most important part to watch when heavy harrowing? Oh, watch so you don't hit something with your rake. Yes. And then you gotta watch for, like the other day it was, it started to rain and it started clumping up on me and I had big piles scattered all over on the other side. I wouldn't try to go too long on it. And watch for flat tires. Oh yes, I didn't even think about that. So I've had them happen, I always did, I always did that. So it isn't really important if you know, like when you turn it around, Miss a little squat, it don't matter. Not. You run at a 20 degree angle here. And why do you run at an angle? So it's going over the furrows, and that'll help. The furrows will help. And you're not going Spread the, the chaff way. out? Yeah, and uh, you're not going the same way the combines went. If you go along the furrows, you won't pick up nothing, and it'll clump up, and it'll go all over the one area where it's going at an angle and kind of goes across the rate. Uh, the furrows are going this way and then I'm going this way. Yeah. They all don't hit at once. It's different parts of the rake. Oh, you got to watch that corner you don't get that cable back there. The guy who it a few years ago that was where I was, he turned the tractor too sharp and down there. Put the cable and then a bunch of stuff on the rake and everything else. Oh, that's not good. And during corners, unlike seeding, you leave the implement or the rake in the ground or on the ground. Yeah, you don't yeah. pick it up. Yeah, if you pick it up, you lose everything underneath. And it's a hard habit. When I started, every year when I start airing, I keep wanting to lift it out of the ground at the end of the road. Just like seeding, gosh, yeah. I'll probably experience that as well. So I just cover the deal up. Oh, that's a great idea, actually. And you're on GPS. Yeah. So this tractor is driving itself except for corners, which is just incredible. Yeah, I'd be lost without a GPS. Does the heavy harrow ever get too clogged up with straw? And once in a while the stamp it does. And see, like right now, I, I hardly got any straw in there. Where it was full a little bit over there, it worked its way out. And then at the very end of the field, that's the only time you'll stop and you'll yeah. leave the pile yeah. in a corner for it to be burned? Yeah. There's been times where there's been weeds in the field and stuff that I had to uh, dump them a couple, three times because it builds up too much. You got kosher the bad way. Would you say that this is one of your favorite operations to oh, be a part of? Oh, I don't mind it. Yeah, I kind of like it. Anything to do with the tractor, I like it. Yes. Except if you don't do. A little tractor where you're out in the open. I have a tractor like this I like to drive. 
very nice tractor. Yeah. And this is actually the new tractor we got to the farm. So if you haven't watched that video, definitely go and check it out. It's not new, it's very old, but it's new to us. It's a John Deere 9630, and I think it has 525 horsepower. So it's definitely big. And our other tractor, which is almost the exact same as this one, is a John Deere 9430, and it has 425 horsepower. Yeah. And that's the one you're used to driving. Yeah. Listen, you get in this one, they're the same thing. Yes, they're very similar. I drove this tractor for seating, so if you watch my seating videos, that's this tractor. And then Darcy drove the other John Deere with the John Deere drill as well. I had such an awesome experience seating, and it was really interesting to learn all about it. Yeah. We are harrowing the field at an angle right now. How do you decide what fields that we combine to heavy harrow? Or do you try and get as many as you can, the most severe ones first? Yeah, yeah. I usually try to get them all, but sometimes you can't. You pull a big run, grows behind. I went disking out at war shops and stuff a couple weeks ago. And so I went over most of the fields and I could see which ones really needed it. But otherwise, usually I try to get every one. But yes. it don't happen sometimes. I, last year, the tractor, the field I'm going through next, it started snowing the next day and we never did finish it. I think I brought the tractor back to the farm about November. Oh, wow. Or the end of November, so stolen stuff. The way the weather sounds, I'll be able to get more stolen fields. That's great. If you have spring wheat, would that not be a crop that you would have a harrow? Well, mostly sometimes, winter wheat? no, mostly winter wheat. But the next field I'm doing is spring wheat because that had a lot of that soft light damage and wheat's on the ground still. So. Oh, yes. That was really terrible, and I actually have a video titled Soft Flies, and that shared a major issue we have in our area, and that's actually very specific to Montana. That causes a lot of damage to our crops and our yields. It's an insect that burrows in the wheat and makes the wheat fall over, so it, you're not able to harvest it. Yeah, when you do it, it's a little hurt to slow down when you're turning, but okay. I'm kind of used to it. So do you run it full throttle? Yeah, I use it. Wonderful yeah. information, Darcy. Yeah, that's yeah, like seeding. I'm, I'm just, I, I don't really slow the tractor down much seeding at the end, but I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, so you're like a professional. Well, I don't know, I don't know about that, but I'd be kind of used to it. Does the twine ever get caught up in the harrow? Yeah, well, in fact, we just had a bunch on there this morning that I didn't see it. As you can see, we have GPS guidance and the blue, so you can tell where we have arrowed. Right now, Darcy is lifting the rake up. Now folding up so that it can travel. What type of heavy harrow is this? This is a flex coil. Flex coil, so just like the drill I was seeding with. Yeah. Our duck foots are flex well too. And a duck foot is what people refer to when they plow the fields, correct? Yeah, yeah. And got, just like the drill, it's got the shanks down, and it's got big white shovels on it that kind of tear the ground up. We're primarily a no-till operation now, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very yeah. much for the wonderful lesson, Darcy. Yeah, we'll be moving down the next field. Yes, we are. Right now, I am in the car flagging Darcy while he moves to a new field. Now. Well, I'm trying to see this is supposed to latch. Oh, it okay. Latch, and I might have to pull ahead a little bit. If it don't, if it don't latch, when I take off, this will go up, and it, everything will make a big wreck. Oh. This is the harrow. These are the wires you're not supposed to hit when turning. This is what it looks like up close. It's basically like a big rake. You probably used a rake in your garden before. This is basically the same concept on a much larger scale. So these are the travel wheels and then these are the field wheels. Darcy has now raised the rake back up because he ha he's having a couple of problems getting the rake to latch on so that we are ready to harrow. It's latched. Yeah. That's great. So let's see what it looks like when it's latched. Oh, there we go, it latched. So we finally got the rake latched and we are ready to start harrowing. It can be quite challenging sometimes. The trials and tribulations associated with farming. 